Well, MPs can't stop taking jabs at each other, even in a virtual meeting. That was the mood at yesterday's first sitting of the National Assembly and the President's first Q&A since the lockdown. Opposition MPs challenged various aspects of government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. A key debate was whether the lockdown should have been extended to over 80 days, with some MPs saying it was too early to ease regulations. So let's unpack all of these issues now with Dr. Simbile Mbete, a senior lecturer at the University of Pretoria. She joins us via our Skype line. Uh, Dr. Mbete, good morning once again. Thanks so much for your time on the AM report. Uh, you know, one just thinks back to covering those parliamentary sittings uh, at a time before the coronavirus, and uh, I, I don't know what to say. Is it sad to see that things haven't changed? MPs still taking jabs at each other, even over the airwaves. Well, there's some comfort in it, right? Because we've had so much disruption uh, and the world has changed so dramatically for all of us in the last three months. There was something quite comforting to see MPs <laughs> back uh, to their old antics and to see the Deputy Speaker, Mr. Tenodi, you know, being as flustered and annoyed as, as, as always. And so um, there was certainly, I think, uh, something, something comforting yeah. and interesting to see that they could still pull it off yeah. um, with all the same drama uh, online uh, as they do in person. Yeah, except from the comfort of their own homes. So the first exactly. Q&A session since uh, the president declared the state of national disaster, no surprise that almost every single question was around government's handling in some shape or form of the coronavirus pandemic. Definitely, no surprise at all. I mean, this has been the biggest issue of the last three months. And so I think that the MPs themselves would have been negligent if they hadn't asked uh, questions uh, about the coronavirus pandemic. I think that also what we saw was that the parties asked questions pretty much in line with what their position has been uh, about the lockdown, about the government's response to the coronavirus pandemic. So you had the DA uh, questioning the government's scientific advice uh, on the lockdown uh, in, on the initial lockdown and on the different extensions and basically questioning uh, government science uh, around continuing the lockdown given the economic effects. And then you had the EFF uh, counter to that, uh, questioning the government choosing to start easing the lockdown uh, and what scientific advice the government was using to ease the lockdown given some advice that's come from the World Health Organization that lockdowns should only be eased if cases are decreasing. And then, of course, you had the Freedom Front Plus raising questions that it has raised before about uh, whether uh, the president's statements about wanting to reshape or restructure the economy uh, are appropriate. And the president giving a very forceful response to that question. It's very interesting as well just to see how politicking is never far away um, when it comes to uh, trying to score points in some, in some way. I'm just thinking of the DA interim leader, John Steenhuisen, this week saying that, you know, the fact that we ease to level three of the lockdown, that is what's to blame for this new spike of infections around the country, but especially in the Western Cape. But not too long ago, Alan Windy in the Western Cape saying uh, that they wanted the lockdown regulations eased altogether. So it, it's very interesting to see how the president and government and its handling, I don't think there's any right step to take. Certainly not. And I think that, that, that those comments were the other way around. So it was Alan Windy saying that there'd been a spike in cases because of the easing to level three. And it was John Steenhuisen that's been calling for, uh, for, for the easing completely of the lockdown. And I think this is the tension between political parties uh, and individuals that are outside of government and people that are in government. So let's remember Alan Windy as the Premier of the Western Cape is in government. It is his responsibility uh, to contain this virus um, and to deal with the fallout in terms of health care uh, and all sorts of other things. And so his perspective on uh, what needs to be done is very different from the leader of his own party who isn't in government mm. uh, and, who ca and who doesn't have to take these kinds of life and death decisions on a daily basis. And I think uh, the DA and the DA-led government is the most acute clashing uh, of uh, of 
what happens when you're in government, whether you're versus, versus when you're out of government, uh, that we've seen uh, throughout uh, this crisis. Um, and I think that, you know, what happens in a crisis is that in the early days of a crisis, everybody uh, mobilizes around the government to try to deal with the crisis. You see a very high amount of um, kind of patriotism and agreement and cooperation. And then that naturally starts to go down um, as a crisis is prolonged uh, and you start seeing disagreement, you start seeing the politicking emerge. And I think that that's not uh, any, uh, it's not surprising. Uh, and it does and South Africa isn't any different from anywhere else in the world in terms of of, of that taking place. Uh, I think that it is to be expected in a crisis, and I yeah. think it's especially to be expected in a prolonged crisis such as the one we're in. Let's talk about how the president addressed questions around the economy, and it's again interesting to see how opposition parties phrased their questioning. Uh, the EFF's leader Julius Malema saying that the decision to uh, reopen the economy in some uh, parts was a decision made for profit. Uh, disingenuous when we know that the people who are bearing the brunt of the effects of the lockdown economically are the ones who are poor, vulnerable, most of them black South Africans. Certainly. And I think that, you know, the, the, the EFF has really driven a, a, a line that indicates or that seems to make it seem as if this lockdown was always going to be in place and that it was that it would always be sustainable to have an extended lockdown and what we've seen in South Africa and in the rest of the continent um, and elsewhere is that a sustained lockdown is impossible right because uh, people need to work in any um, country, and not just a developing in any country, country yeah. not just a developing country not just South Africa uh, and also what we've seen is that the people that have borne the brunt of the lockdown are people in the informal sector and uh, and given that the informal sector has been the last to be brought on board um, and particularly industries that employ mainly black women like hairdressing um, like like the food industry um, you know, they're the ones who really need to be getting back to work. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. we need to somehow mini mitigate uh, that economic activity with the health care consequences. Dr. Simbile Mbete, as always, thanks so much for your time. We're just scratching the surface there of what was discussed in that virtual Q&A session, the first sitting of the National Assembly uh, over the airways taking place just yesterday. Thanks very much, as always, for your time.